Come on, I'm talking to myself, thinking it's on. I'm tired today, so I'm just getting enough strength to get up and talk about these. The last seven or eight years, uh, I helped a friend do a halfway house a few years ago. And we had a, uh, one of the guys there was named Charlie Boy. Charlie Boy was a severe alcoholic. Some of the guys died, you know, that's, they were at the end of their rope. But I remember when Charlie, he got uh, his disability about six months before he died of alcoholism. And he drank himself to death. Pops, who you heard me talk about, uh, Pops saw Charlie Boy sort of like his nephew. But I don't think they were related. But that's, they had family. So Pops became sort of like if the guys had felonies or whatever, they can't get the check. So they have other people. It's not provider or trustee or whatever. So Pops would get the check. But then Charlie would sometimes, they're both dead so I could tell the story. But Charlie got violent with Pops to get the money. And then he would get the money, and he drank himself to death. I visited Charlie twice, or at least once, in memorial. He was already on the deathbed. We prayed for him. Miraculously recovered. Okay. There was a man by the name of Shelby. Uh, some of my friends will remember Shelby. And he was another guy I was kind of working with, with actually another halfway house, just through the ministry. Shelby, I think, was 67 or 6. But he was on the street and then also staying like... Now, Shelby, I asked him once, I said, they lie to the guys. Notice the races of these guys. They're all Anglo. Okay? This place is... I'll give you a little information. I said, Shelby, why don't you go and get your social security check? Shelby didn't think he qualified to go. There were reasons that he thought he could not get. He had a publishing business. Interesting story. He used to print like a little uh, newspaper many, many years in the day. He had some interesting stories, Shelby. I said, no, no, you got to go down there. Now, I don't know if I told the guys, look, tell him this friend of ours, John, told us we qualify. He went down. He was... There was no qualification. He had a social security number and he had a history of uh, paying into social security. They deceived the guys and they don't let them know that you need to go down or you can get it. This is not disability. But sure enough, Shelby had colon cancer. And the guys complained, oh, he stinks and all. Finally, when they approved Shelby, he might have lived six months and died. Shelby, too, I think was alcoholic. I had another friend, I won't give his name, he's still alive, but it's more than one that I told these last five years they would tell you. That John told us when we are 62, because these are older guys, we can come down and apply. They, they're tricking these guys when they go down, because the one of them, this is not just one case I'm giving. It's kind of history. I realized they were lying to these guys, just that they didn't like... They didn't qualify. But no, this is not, this is just their, they met the age and they had some history of work. Some had more. I think Shelby's check was like 1300 a month. So they're lying to them and they happen to be Anglos. And another friend, the same thing. I said, no, no, and I took him. A few of these guys I took, I asked them, when are you going to turn 62? More than one this has happened with. And I said, look, and some I took. And then one of them, I said, no, no, you go in, you apply, you got your social security. And then I heard later, uh, someone else told me, oh, he got turned down because he missed a meeting. I said, no, there's no meeting he has to not miss. And then he went back and got the check. You know, there are establishments right there off of that street. Because I've been to one. And when you're in there, there's not even English being spoken. Which is fine. If it's a nice Mexican restaurant, I kind of can manage. But then you don't want to have that view, that opinion. When you go down to Mexico, which I have done multiple times over the years, even on this side of the border, in the U.S. side, again, there used to be restaurants I go in, no English at all. That's okay. 
I love the Hispanic people. But now if you feel that that same environment is right here within these types of things, some of the guys use their providers, it's the dealer. All they have to do is not have a felony. And so when the guys get approved, the check goes right, it doesn't have to be a relative, and the dealer gets the check every month. And then most of it's meth, and then he automatically distributes the meth. Why do they wait until the guys are on the deathbed? Because this happened more than once, and why do they lie to them? That, oh no, you don't qualify. No, they did. These guys did. The few I gave you did. Because when the lawyers that work with the courts here, when they take the case, then they get the 80,000, 100,000, possibly share some of that with the judge who gave the approval. It's all here in the courts. The uh, hearings that take place are the same courts that I've talked about for years. It's a building right where you have the courthouse and everything else. So they get the cut. What happens? Maybe they share 30,000 out of the 60, and the guys are dead within eight months. So it accomplishes what? The problem with some of these homeless guys, they get them off the street, they know they're going to overdose. They took the money, and they didn't have to give these guys their checks for very long, they knew they would overdose and die. Okay, so money plays a role in all of this. But the sad thing is, people that really put money their entire lives, they disgrace them by saying you have insufficient work history. Well, what about other sicknesses, maybe fatal ones and all, what about those? Now you've got to wait until right before you die. So it's a scam here, okay? So some of them, they use the provider or the person that gets the check is the dealer. And then they get it for however months. Oftentimes, when the person dies, I actually informed Social Security myself in writing when some of the guys died. They didn't know. I said, so and so died. And I gave the name and the zip. The, you'd think they would have contacted me once. That's how they had notification. Because I didn't want the check to keep going to the dealer for 15 more years after the guy passed. What a scam they're doing out of this. And that's all with the Social Security in Corpus Christi.